The engine in this car rewrote the rule book. It told every other supercar manufacturer that they needed a reset. They needed to do better. Step aside, Porsche flat six twin turbo. Enter Nissan V6 twin turbo. Everyone goes on about how amazing the R34 Skyline GTR's engine is. But what about the R35's engine? Getting as nerdy as possible, what makes this V6 so special? In this video, we'll dive into the engineering of this engine block, explore the huge world of modifications with these things, and take an incredibly rare specimen for a spin. If you like GTRs, this is about as quintessential as it gets in this gunmetal grey. It's an 09 car from my pal Chris at Swallows Racing. And he says, apart from some HKS piped under the bonnet and some bits of carbon, this car is completely stock. So that means 480 horsepower. Nissan said that, but realistically, these things out of the box are at least 500. This is the specific subject of today's video. What is this all-time great engine? Well, it's a VR engine from Nissan, which was a collection of twin turbo V6s from three liters to 3.8 liters and from 300 horsepower to 700 horsepower. This specific one is the VR38DETT, which stands for VR, just an engine code, 3.8 liters, dual overhead cam, electronic fuel injection, twin turbo. It debuted in the R35 GTR in 2007, emerging out of the factory with 480 horsepower. But just like the GTRs before it, there was huge potential lying within. The power increased over time, jumping up especially with the Nismos, and peaked with the Ital Design GTR 50 at 710 brake horsepower thanks to a couple of GT3 racing turbos. But that's nothing. A thousand brake horsepower from one of these is almost par for the course in the modern community. The current record I can find online is 3,500 brake horsepower from one of these blocks. So, going back to its first principles, what makes it so capable from factory? Let's start with simply how well built these engines are. Every single R35 GTR engine is hand built by just four mechanics. They are called the Takumi Craftsmen at the Yokohama plant in Japan. The engines are so well built that Nissan applied 60,000 mile warranties to every single one. That blew the minds of every other supercar maker at the time. Most modern engines from factory can take a bit more power, but time and time again, Nissan always seems to go that step further. My question is though, what if you're not one of the four guys and you want a job building GTR engines? What if you're not, I mean, this badge says Mr. Kurosawa, so he was one of the four. If you apply for that job, do they just say, nah, mate, you're, you're not one of the boys. You're not one of the four, bugger off. Go make some, I don't know, 350, 370Z engines not a GTR, step aside. You're not one of the boys. Are you one of the boys? Are you one of the boys? I'm not one of the boys. It has been really cool researching the Nissan GTR in the run up to this video, diving into all its intricacies. And what's helped me get incredibly nerdy about the subject is the sponsor of today's video, Opera. Opera is a desktop browser that I've used to get this video script into ship shape. And it has a ton of features that have made it incredibly easy and super smooth. It has an incredibly easy free VPN and ad blocker so I can consume videos about 3000 horsepower in Nissan's without any disturbances. And those videos can be pulled out into the video pop-out feature, meaning I can keep researching while having them playing in the background like a podcast. We quite often use footage from the 90s and 2000s in our videos, and Opera has something called Lucid Mode 2.0, a video enhancer that uses AI to smooth out and depixelate videos so that they are clearer and details really spring out off the screen. I'm also a big fan of Aria, the integrated browser AI. You can simply select a few words from an article using the tooltip function, and it will automatically search for you, streamlining the research process. To keep all my workflow organized, Opera has tab islands too, which organize and group all my tabs by topic. Aria also has an image generator. You give it a simple prompt and it will create the image for you completely from scratch. While researching the development of the Nissan GTR, I asked Aria to generate an image of the original Skyline GTR to compare it with this later model. And as you can see, it instantly provided me with a custom high quality visual. To download this browser and benefit from its convenient tools, click the link in the description below. Back to a very happy mic in a very nice Nissan. 
this V6 then, let's start with the block. It's an immediate move away from the R34 Skyline's cast iron block, because that thing up there is cast aluminium. And that theoretically means that it can deal with less cylinder pressure, but it can get up to operating temperature quicker, thanks to the material science of aluminium, and also it's lighter. Something that does help it in the strength stakes is the fact that it is a closed deck block. Now we've looked at that in Subaru engines before, but basically it doesn't have big coolant jackets surrounding each cylinder. They're closed off, which makes it a much stronger block so that it can deal with more power. Peeking into the cylinders, you then start to find the really trick stuff with the VR38 plasma coated cylinder liners. Now that makes them low friction and high endurance by adding a harder protective layer to the liners. That's the surface that the piston rings are interacting with as they go up and down. That's pretty special. The sump is magnesium for better heat dissipation, and also the oil system is thermostatically controlled. That means the engine can get up to temperature as quickly as possible. That's a kind of theme throughout the VR38. So they're managing the heat within this engine as much as they can, a lot more so than a lot of other performance car engines. Like a lot of much more modern engines, the VR38 has a secondary intake system to heat up the catalytic converters a bit quicker. That really helps the emissions from an engine like this the second you click that start button. And that was a big goal of Nissan from the beginning of this project. They didn't want the GTR to be this gas guzzling supercar. They wanted it to be efficient and as clean as possible, as well as producing the performance that it does. Weirdly, the internals are cast, with forged components only coming along if you go aftermarket. That is surprising considering the potential these engines have, but I guess it has led to an industry that will upgrade your car to be capable of stuff like this. The next piece of nerdiness comes in the form of these spark plugs. They are iridium tipped, which means they have a stronger spark and have less electrical resistance compared to the usual copper. That means they take less voltage to operate, which makes ignition faster and more reliable. The VR38 engines also have two IHI turbochargers that can take the thing past 600 horsepower. Although once you go past 600 horsepower, that's when the internals start to give in. Although if you want a bang on 600 BHP GTR, you simply need an ECU tune and an exhaust. The internet says that the crank and the block of this engine can take upwards of 1200, 1300 brake horsepower. But after the internals, it's the clutch and the gearbox that give up. They cannot deal with those sorts of power levels. The engine breathing is really good though. That head is ported in a way that breathes really effectively, which means it can reach those four figure power levels. The next step is 2000 horsepower. And at that point, you're talking a billet block to deal with those extreme cylinder pressures and a pair of much bigger turbos. You actually have to relocate them in the engine bay because they are that much bigger. So that's what I've been able to discern from the internet, but let's get even nerdier. Let's dive even deeper with one of the best GTR tuners in the business. From an expert like yourself, why is the VR38, if you were to pick four things, like why is the VR38 such an amazing engine from factory? The head design, um, head design is really good. When you look at the port design, um, you've just got to look down the inlet manifold and you can just see straight in. There's no there's no return on the uh, intake or anything like that. Um, the port size as well on the cylinder head is super good. Um, you know, the airflow is massive across there and they just respond so well for tune and minimal amount and, you know, the horsepower just goes wild on them, really. So how would you improve, if you were to be Nissan back in 2007, how would you improve the VR38? Obviously, from a tuner's point of view, you would say forge pistons, forge rods, a bit like what a 2JZ was. Then you've got to look at the manufacturing point of view and you can see why they don't do that. Um, and obviously, they're designing an engine for you know, 500 horsepower production. Um, so it only has to be good for sort of 600 horsepower, which it clearly is, you know. I honestly can't really think of anything from a manufacturer's point of view, what you could change really. Um, it would just be more like upgrades 
uh, making it stronger more than anything else. The actual engine itself is is really good. I mean, the bell housing design is not very good on them, what they did. Um, but obviously, that's driveline, so not the engine, you know. What's wrong with the bell housing? It bolts onto the back of the engine. It carries um, a fly, but the fly plate goes onto the actual flywheel. But then there's a fly plate which transfers the the drive of the engine to the transmission, which are really small when you look at them, and they're transferring like an awful lot of power. And um, the early one, early design was basically just a, a bearing pressed into the aluminium housing. And what used to happen is the bearings wore away, and they used to become all loose and the um, prop shaft used to be moving around and you used to get loads of noise off them. Nissan did address it in the, um, they started putting sleeves in there, like a stainless steel sleeve, what the bearing went into um, and was held in with circlips. And it, it did work, but it's still over time, then um, they still can get noise from the bearings. But that's probably the one of the worst design flaws, really, of the whole car. Could Nissan have gone cast iron with the block? Because obviously they went aluminium in the end, but do you think yeah. cast iron would have been an option? Not really, because of the weight. Um, obviously, you've got you know the actual engine package itself with a twin turbo setup, and you know a big inlet manifold and everything on the top. And I just think from a packaging point of view, there would be too you know like nose heavy, you know, because obviously the aluminium block. When you actually get the block down to a bare block. You can literally pick it up with one hand. Okay, so so straight sixes it could work, but V six just from the configuration, it just yeah, work. yeah, and like a packaging so aluminium, obviously it's a lot easier to you know work with. You don't have to have gaskets and stuff like that, and it's just much better material, really. Cool. And then from a tuner's perspective, if Nissan were to come out with an R thirty six GTR, what would mm. you want to see from its engine? What 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 would you do? I would like the engine to be stronger internally. Um, I think because now 500 horsepower in a car like that isn't enough. I think you would have to be 650 to 700 horsepower um, from the factory. So they're going to have to do something to address it. I think the engine itself would be okay. I think it would have to just be strengthened internally and have larger turbos on it. The turbos that they fitted on that car from 2008, you know, the, the, the new style stuff can be super responsive and make a lot more power now. Um, compared to what they had back then, the te- like the technology's obviously moved on a lot. And w- would you be disappointed if they moved away from a V6 twin turbo? Because interestingly, you know, the likes of McLaren and Ferrari have gone from V8 and have come yeah. down. To V6 oh, twin yeah. Do you, do yeah, would you I, see that's all the configuration to go for? I, I couldn't really see them putting a four cylinder in. I just don't think it would, you know, suit the car. Or they'd probably go down the electric route and hybrid route. Yes. Um, um, I just think a V6 would be the way to go with it, really. And they would probably go down the hybrid route. I think that's where where they would go with it. Um, but I think it would have to be 650 to 700 horsepower to be competitive in the market now. So. The VR38 engine found its way into more cars than just the GTR. You guys may remember it was in the back of the very cool Renault RS1, this kind of track-only racer-looking thing. Then more recently, it's been found in the back of the Praga Bahima, a much more modern supercar that Mr. Ben Collins is actually currently helping develop. There is one other car that we actually stumbled upon on a recent trip to RML, one of the craziest Nissans ever thought up. And this is the Nissan Duke R. Now they built a couple of prototypes, but they also built some proper production cars. I gather most of them are in the UAE. Just look at this thing. They managed to fit all of the Nissan GTR gubbins into a Duke. In case you don't believe me, let's pop my bonnet. Now, I, I would expect this thing, you'd have to take off a sort of front clamshell like a proper race car, but no, it's the proper Nissan Duke bonnet that just pops normally. And in there is the twin turbo V6. It's right back. It's, well, the, the back of the engine will pretty much almost be in the dashboard. It's very compact, but it's an immaculate job. It's not hodgepodge bodgery at all. It's RML, they've done it properly. That is in there very nicely. I gather some GTR bits continue inside as well. It's not 
all Nissan Duke. It is genuinely a mix and match of them both. So this dash here is Nissan Duke, but this central panel is GTR. The transmission selector here is GTR. The instruments, the steering wheel are all GTR. They've managed to perform some serious plastic surgery and get all of this R35 stuff in there. It's pretty phenomenal. Cages, bucket seats with Duke R stitched into them. Question is, does this one work? Oh, 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 a slight hesitation, but then on she goes. I've just had the CTO at RML come up to me and say, you can take it for a spin if you want. Not out on the open road within the RML facility here, but yeah, I can take it for a bit of a blast. I'm gonna take him up on that offer. As it stands, it doesn't seem like any manufacturer is throwing R&D into creating new internal combustion engines. So it begs the question, will engines like this, the VR38, one that's over-engineered, super tunable, will engines like that ever be made again? Who's gonna be the next manufacturer to step up and have all the tuners frothing at the mouth? Who do you think it's gonna be? Porsche, Ford, Nissan? Tell me in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe. I'm gonna drive this R35 just a little bit more. Maybe the whole weekend. See what the owner says.